So as we've seen a lot lately with the rise of the right wing and the rise of the alt-right and white nationalists and stuff, they love to politicise history and one of the biggest events that has been politicised throughout the last 1000 years or a bit less is the Crusades. And I made a video before about a year ago and I'm going to sort of go over a lot of the same points just because I have a bigger audience now and just talking about how stupid and ridiculous the politicization of the Crusades are when you look at them in a proper historical context. And if you're some right winger or maybe who stumbled across this video because I know Steven Crowder made a video on it basically perpetrating these myths and stereotypes. I have a history degree from a pretty good university in England and we did the Crusades and everything so I know loads about it. I've read a lot of books on medieval history in this period. I also have a master's in international relations which is political science but just saying I have a background in this sort of stuff in terms of education. So my opinion is relevant, it's not just some random guy talking about the Crusades and I'm going to get into detail about why I think it's so ridiculous the way we paint this conflict. But yeah that's my background and that's why you should care what I think, so I know a lot of you will say it's irrelevant, I've been brainwashed by the Marxists at university and everything, so I know right-wingers like to say that as well. But yeah, to get that out of the way, let's get into the video. So, what right-wingers like to paint the Crusaders is a defence against Islam. So basically, in their mind, the whole of, you know, Europe came together to stop the Muslims from taking over basically the world. You know, we all came together to stop the Muslims conquering everywhere and, you know, the whole of the world would have been under Islam, just Islamic control and everything. But this is so ridiculous, I'm just going to have to debunk it. So I'm going to explain the history of all this stuff. So it really starts with the foundation of Islam in about, is it 632, I think Muhammad dies. And after that, his followers expand the empire he created. So in 711, the Muslims cross over into Spain. And Spain was a Roman territory, so it's home to a lot of Christians and stuff. And they take over most of Spain. They expel a lot of Christians and really subjugate them and stuff. And then what happens with a lot of these things, the, the group who invaded Spain sort of break off from the mainland Arabs, so they become their own caliphate themselves. So we already see the splinters in the Islamic unity at the time. And obviously there's already divisions in Islam starting almost straight away because you have the Shiites who are you know, followers of Muhammad's bloodline, thinking Muhammad's bloodline should rule Islam, while, where the Sunnis believe that, you know, it should be more left to, like, priestly figures and stuff like that, and they should control it, so that's already happening as well. But yeah, what also happens is a lot of these Muslim groups then push into France, where they are defeated at the Battle of Tours, and this is part of the propaganda of, you know, when the Christians beat back Islam and stuff, and we stop the Islamic expansion and everything. And at a similar time, the Muslim Empire also expanded into places like Sicily and Italy and various islands in the Mediterranean and everything. And then so you obviously have a massive expansion of Islam going everywhere, but it doesn't really threaten mainland Europe after the Battle of Tours as much. And then we kind of have to skip a couple of years to the 1060s and stuff where you have the Catholic Church split with the Greek Church, well, obviously the Orthodox Church, which we know it as today, over various issues. So that's in, the, I think, 1065 they split from each other. And I will get into why that is relevant, but that's just part of this history and everything. But yeah, what right-wingers like to do is paint this whole period as just total Muslim dominance, total Muslim expansion and everything like that. And there's literally no nuance and we're coming up to the first crusade in this video but just to make some points is like you know Muslims translated a lot of the works of the ancient Greeks like Aristotle and Plato and everything and we didn't actually have knowledge of that in Europe and what happened is in the border in Spain between the Christian territories and the Muslim territories sometimes um, Christian priests would go to the Arabic territories to translate the works of the Greeks because the Muslims translated them all. So our like knowledge of the Greek world comes from the Muslim Empire and stuff because priests from the Christians went over and translated them and brought, brought them back. And I think it's pretty amazing stuff like that. And it's just not never really characterized in writing propaganda because obviously in their view, Islam is so backward and everything. But it's just an interesting uh, like nuance to think about. But then let's get into the crusade. So the biggest thing right-wingers talk about is how the first crusade was in the Christians. Like, we have had enough of the Muslim expansion. We need to fight against it. We need to make, you know, a stand against it. And, you know, we need to defend ourselves because we can't have this anymore. And it's obviously such a big myth because Islam was not threatening the West as we know it today. And also another thing to point out is that the West as a concept, or even Europe as a concept, wasn't very united. So France wasn't actually a country at this point. The Kingdom of France was just around Paris. But you had all the other territories, like for example, 
the Normandy, which is home to the Normans who took over Britain. But they also owned places like, you know, Italy and Sicily and places like that. And then you had the Franks who were French and German, you had all these other groups in France and they weren't united at all. They were constantly fighting each other all the time. There was no unity amongst them. And what people need to understand is in the medieval period, it wasn't about Christianity versus Islam. And a lot of the time it was they all fighting each other because a lot of the time Christians and Muslims allied together to fight various other Christian groups or vice versa and everything. So there's too much nuance for a lot of right wingers to understand, but that's the gist of it. And now going back to the Greek church split in with the Catholic church, and this goes into the point of the first crusade. So basically what had happened in that area of the world is that the Byzantine Empire was being eaten away at by the Seljuk Turks who were Asian converts who had come down to the Middle East from the Chinese steppe lands and everything and they converted to Islam and they taken over a lot of territory and they were pretty hostile to other groups like the Arabs because the Arab Muslims viewed the Seljuks as apostates because they were Asian and not Arab because they thought you can only be Muslim really a real Muslim if you were Arab just like Muhammad was you couldn't be you know Asian these weird Asian people to them who'd come down from somewhere they hadn't even been and, and taken over and there are other groups like the Fatimids and Egypt who are Shia and you know Iranians and stuff so it's a very diverse mixture of, of Islamic beliefs that they really didn't get along with each other either. But this one group, the Seljuks, was threatening Constantinople. So Alexius I of the Byzantine Empire sent a letter to Pope Urban II, the Pope of the Catholic Church, saying, can you please send some knights to help me defend against the Seljuks before they take over Constantinople? But while Urban was traveling around Europe, he conceived of this idea of a crusade to bring back the Holy Land, so he would turn Alexius's request into this crusade. So when he reached France, he started preaching about a crusade, and there's various testimonies at the time of what he said, but it's basically about, you know, the Muslims uh, killing Christians in the East, you know, um, the Greek Christians and everything, and, and it was time to take back the Holy Land. And what happened is there were two crusades that were conceived, the People's Crusade, which was made up of peasants and everything, led by a quite charismatic preacher called Peter the Hermit, who led them through Hungary and everything, and it was mainly just peasants, and some of them were armed, and basically what they did was they slaughtered their way through Europe, you know, killing lots of Jews, because in their mind, Jews had killed Jesus, so when they were in Hungary, they just slaughtered every Jew they found and everything, and they made their way to Constantinople, basically on foot, because they had no money. But the real crusade was made up of medieval knights and the various aristocracy around Germany and England and France, France, and they came together and they went to France mainly by things like boat, although some did come across by land, and they all met at Constantinople. And then there were some other Norman groups who had more experience in the Middle East. So there's one guy called Bohemond who led the Sicilian Normans, but he could speak Arabic because he had lots of experience with the Islamic world and everything. So it was this mixture of various Christian warlords and fanatical peasants who made their way to Constantinople. And what's also funny, you know, these people going to defend Christianity laid siege to Constantinople and killed a lot of Greek Christians. You know, because when you're going for the defense of the Christian world, you kill a lot of Christians and, you know, you also slaughter a lot of Jews on your way there because they're a massive threat to you. No, it's just this right-wing propaganda that we have now is that it was somehow a defense of Christianity, but as I've said to you now, there was no threat from Islam at the time and it was conceived as a way for the Pope to get back the Holy Land and it was undertaken mainly by medieval warlords. You know, lots of, lots of these monarchies didn't go on the crusade, you know, the English monarchy didn't go on the crusade, just set, sent one of their like sons and stuff. Most of these monarchies didn't participate, it was mainly the aristocracy. So yeah, once they're in Constantinople, the People's Crusade goes over first to Asia Minor and gets absolutely slaughtered by the Seljuks because they're not even armed, most of them. But then the, the main force of the crusade go over and they start retaking a lot of this territory. But what is also funny, when a lot of these warlords take over a certain part of the territory, they don't even go to Jerusalem, they just stay there. So Bohemond, the guy I referenced before, who's a really interesting character, he just stayed in Antioch because he just wanted territory for himself. He never even made it to Jerusalem in the end. And eventually, you know, through a really fanatical fight, and it is pretty amazing how, how outnumbered they were in the crusade and they still won. But when they made it to Jerusalem, there wasn't like massive defenses and they just went in, literally killed every single Muslim that was in Jerusalem. 
and you can read some accounts of it. It's pretty devastating. You know, talking about the corpses and the blood and everything, killing all these innocent civilians who were surrendering. And you know, some Muslim warlords did surrender and got some safe passage out of Jerusalem. But yeah, it was, it was really brutal and it's really not something to glorify uh, in the 2010s as, as a lot of people are these days with the rise of white nationalism and everything. So the first crusade was 1095 to 1099 and in 1099 they captured Jerusalem, made it the kingdom of Jerusalem, they, they anointed one of their own as the king of Jerusalem. And yeah, that was pretty much it. But what is also funny is on the way to Jerusalem through the various battles, the Crusaders actually allied themselves with various Muslim groups and Muslim warlords often helped them fight because they were fighting against other Muslim warlords they're in competition with. And what the point of me saying that is that because they were all fighting each other, there's no united Islam against Christianity. They just are fighting for territory and control. They don't give a shit about taking over Europe and destroying Christianity forever. They only care about their own power. The same with a lot of the Crusaders. They went to forge a kingdom for themselves in the Middle East. They didn't really give a shit about Jerusalem and stuff because a lot of them didn't even make it there. They just took territory for themselves in the Greek world and in the Middle East and just said, yeah, this is mine now. This is my kingdom and I'm going to rule this on my own. So yeah, that, 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 that's the first crusade. And if you, if you look at it in this context, can you really see it as a defense of Christianity? Can you really see it as, you know, Christianity's on its knees? You know, so there was a massive response from everyone to go fight the Muslims in the Middle East. No, that's not what it was. It was a relatively stable period in terms of, you know, the Muslim expansion had really been stopped in its tracks in the 700s. And instead of just expanding more, they just consolidated their power. And here's where it gets complicated. So obviously the Muslims eventually retook Jerusalem under Saladin and even though there was some back and forth through various other crusades and everything where at times, you know, Muslim warlords agreed treaties with European princes and kings to, you know, give them back Jerusalem. Eventually it just went back into Muslim control. But like I was saying before, the various Muslim groups who controlled Jerusalem at different times were just some different groups. You know, a lot of the time they were fighting each other and they were different religions and they didn't help each other. But what the right wingers also do is, like I said, 732 is the Battle of Tours, but then they they say this whole period from then to the Siege of Vienna in, in the 1620s, when the Ottoman Empire try and invade Central Europe, they depict this whole period as a constant struggle against Islam and a const constant defense against Islam. And the Siege of Vienna and repelling the Ottomans from Vienna is like the final stage of Christians standing up to Muslim aggression and stuff. And in their mind, it's just a constant struggle against Islam the whole time. And it's so black and white and so ridiculous and there's absolutely no nuance. I can't believe how anyone believes it, but you've got to be pretty stupid to be a white nationalist or be some sort of racist like this and think, you know, history is so binary. You can just be like, here are all the Christians on one side, here are all the Muslims. They're both all united and love, you know, they love their own groups and they're just going to fight an ideological war for about 700 years. So anyone trying to paint the Crusades as anything good or a defense against any anyone has never studied it and doesn't understand history because like I said, the defense against Islam really ended in the 720s. But at the same time, that means you have to think of Islam and Christianity as these monoliths where everyone in, inside these religions gets on and loves each other. But as we know through Christian history and Islamic history, the, the, some of the worst fights are within their own religion. So the Protestants and, and the Catholics absolutely slaughtering each other in Europe or the Shiites and the Sunnis and stuff, especially between, you know, the Persians in Iran and the Arabs. You know, they're slaughtering each other for hundreds of years. You know, that's sometimes the worst violence. And to paint these groups as like these monoliths, it's just so, so ridiculous and shows a total lack of understanding for history at all. And it's basically just putting your political views in 2019 on a historical event and thinking that somehow explains it. And it's a way people like to draw parallels. So a lot of these racists today like to say, we need a new crusade, you know, Islam is taking over Europe just as it did in the 700s or just as it did in the 1600s. We need to have a crusade like back then. But at the same time, it lacks no nuance at all because that's not the way it worked and that's not the way the world works. And it's just, they're putting their racist beliefs in this historical event to try and justify, you know, their, their, their rationale behind it. And also, I don't really understand anyone defending the Crusades because I've seen some defense of it from actually Catholics saying it was a good thing and they buy into this myth. So a lot of people who aren't necessarily evil white nationalists and racists and neo-Nazis believe somehow the Crusade was, the, was a defense of their religion 
and was somehow any force for anything positive. The only thing the Crusades were good for is it was a massive cultural exchange between Middle Eastern groups and Christians, and like I said, there's some good things come out of that, like Christians rediscovering a lot of Greek work that was written in Arabic, you know, from the original Greek, which they could then take home and everything. That was part of the good good things about it, and there's some other cultural exchanges as well, which is quite interesting, but that's probably the best thing to come out of the Crusades. Not, you know, thousands of Christian knights going into Jerusalem and killing every woman and child they saw because of fanatical religion, you know? That's nothing to defend. And what I always say with stuff like this is, history happens and it's not really good putting, you know, our 21st century morals and any of this stuff. But at the same time, while you don't moralize it, like, well, I'm not gonna say that Christians going into Jerusalem and killing women and children is bad because it's just common practice back then like if the muslims did that before they would have killed them all i know like saladin didn't but that was more because the christian knights defending jerusalem was so insane that he didn't want to kill them all because it's just a waste of men on his part so he let them all go but most of the time in medieval times when you took over somewhere you just killed everyone inside or you sold them into slavery that was basic practices and for me to say that is bad which obviously it's bad in 21st century morals, I can tell you that's bad, that it's just pointless because you shouldn't, you know, moralize ancient history essentially a thousand years ago. It's also equally ridiculous for me to say, you know, this was a good thing at all, or this somehow is defensible in 2019. But I think with history, people just need to detach their emotions and politicizing history is just always so, so stupid in my opinion, whether that's the Vietnam War, whether it's World War One, even World War Two to some extent, you know, just politicizing the, these things doesn't do much to help anyone. Because obviously these conflicts are inherently political, but you know, putting your own 21st century spin and myths on them, I just don't think it's very, very healthy. Like people who try and rehabilitate the Vietnam War than anything other, you know, than what it was, an imperialist war by the Americans against against communism because what does communism do shut down free market capitalism and that, that that's essentially what it is but we like to spin it as something heroic because the communists were bad even though america dropped more bombs in north vietnam than the whole of bombs dropped during the whole of world war ii and we somehow think the communists were the bad ones and stuff it's just an interesting way that we politicize history to teach people what is right and wrong it's the same way marxism and stuff is taught in the uk where you like you learn about what communism is and then you just learn about Stalinism straight away. So in your mind, implicitly, you just think communism is Stalinism and that's all you'll ever think it is for a lot of people. But yeah, just to sum up all my points, right-wingers like to paint the Crusades as some sort of defense against Islam, but it's way more nuanced than that and pretty much is completely false as, you know, Islam is not a monolith, Christianity is not a monolith, and for most of this period, Islam was not threatening to take over you know, the whole of the West, Western world. So it's completely, you know, ridiculous to even state that's the truth. And people who push this myth obviously have some sort of white nationalist or conservative agenda, or they're just trying to defend Catholicism or Christianity, and that's pretty much the heart of it. So if you like this type of content, maybe leave a like and subscribe. If you want to find me on social media, you can follow me at The Cavernac on both Instagram and Twitter. I also have a WordPress, which I've written about various topics, and I have quite a few articles up on there. So if you want to check that out, it's just the Cavernacle WordPress. If you think there's anyone you know who might like this style of content, or you just want to educate them on an issue like this, maybe share the video. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.